A few years back, the British royals were so unpopular they could do no right. Then came the wedding of William and Kate and the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Now, with their recent trip to Australia, Prince Charles and Camilla proved the firm is more popular than ever, much to the chagrin of Republicans like me. What you might not have noticed while you were out fluttering your Union Jacks was that another royal had slipped into town, Zara Phillips, the Queen's eldest granddaughter and darling of the English horsey set, was on the Gold Coast, doing a little bit of, dare we say, commercial business. <laughs> When you're Zara Phillips, daughter of Princess Anne, granddaughter of the Queen, and 14th in line to the throne, high heels or not, you're always walking on eggshells while trying to appear a good sport. Ah, oh, hello. Hi, I'm Charles. I've heard all about you. Uh, Hi. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, it's all, all been good. good. It's all been good. Not that you can <laughs> believe anything you read in the papers. No, exactly. It's also wise to be on your guard. I mean, who can you trust? And my job is to stand around and watch it. You can have a fun That's day. That's a fairly painless duty. <laughs> that little bit of knee was good across the front. And Zara had invited us to film her fashion shoot, a promotion for next year's Magic Millions horse racing carnival on the Gold Coast. If you turn your head that way, yeah, perfect. But as she worked, a sneaky member of the paparazzi was lurking in the bushes, <laughs> sniffing out a scoop for the English tabloids and a nice little earner for himself. It's the sort of thing that gives Honest Journos a bad name. But for the UK tabloids, a gem of a story. Not only a fashion faux pas, but royal skin and a red bra strap had been exposed. Worse still, a flip-flop where the royal feet had been spotted in a pair of Aussie thongs. Don't work too hard, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but this kind of inane scrutiny is nothing new for Zara. I'm really not comfortable in this <laughs> Our British media are pretty tricky, but um, unfortunately you can't do anything about it. They're very hard on you. Yeah. Mm. Elbows out towards me, hands a bit higher. Yeah, lovely. Ooh, Zara Phillips copes best by saying less. She's no-nonsense, a little shy, I suspect, and not particularly comfortable being glamorous. No, you're just a natural, or do you have some background in modelling? No. I'm not going to give up my day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me a day. <laughs> and in she comes to the arena here at Greenwich Park. Let's have a listen to this. This is Zara's real day job. She's a professional equestrian, a world beater in the tough discipline called eventing. Good, oh easy, why was I worried? <laughs> Just perfect. Will you explain to me the arcane, strange, mysterious business of eventing? Basically, it's uh, you and a horse doing three different disciplines um, in one competition. So it's a kind of Iron Man thing for horses. Yeah, a little bit. Mm. A triathlon. You've got a dressage, which is the pretty bit, um, the ballet bit. After that we do cross country is the fun bit, the fast bit, you know, where you're making them jump into water and... And the know, dangerous ditches. bit too, I suppose. Yeah. And then you've got the show jumping at the end after you've done all that. It's a big treble. What Zara does is not for the timid. This is a rigorous sport where triumph and disaster run neck and neck. Well, this would be the story of the games if Zara Phillips was to grab gold. The Four months ago, she competed at the London Olympics Beautiful. Actually, she found a lovely spot to it. Well, and to add to the pressure, Zara had the world's highest profile cheer squad. Just to be at an Olympics was a dream come true for me. And Having your whole family there. Yeah, for once. Is that good or bad? Me. You know, it's good. You, it's great that they can come and support you. Shamelessly named Rob for me. Who was there to watch? Um, my cousins, brother and sister-in-law. My mum, my dad was there because he coaches the Americans. He was for the other side? Yeah. Traitor. Now go. Go. She makes it sound no more important than getting together for a Sunday barbecue. But in the stands, Zara's family include Prince William, Kate, Prince Harry, the princesses Eugenie and Beatrice, Camilla, 
and of course, Zara's mum, Princess Anne. It seemed only the Queen couldn't make it, which was rather a shame, because Zara won the silver medal. Your grandmother is quite a horsewoman. Did she give you any advice? Um, no, she she was just proud, and you know, I'm I'm lucky that she's got a huge love for the game and you know for what what horses do. Before leaving, the princess stopped to thank the midwives and staff. Captain Phillips leant forward and gave his daughter a rather bemused smile. No one has a home video collection like the royals. Zara was born in 1981, the only daughter to Princess Anne and her then-husband, Captain Mark Phillips. We couldn't actually see, but it's said the baby has wispy blonde hair. Does it bite? No, not yet. But it might after it's finished with you. And although she's no princess... Zara! Zara! She's always had a privileged front row seat in the theatre of modern British history. You met the puppy, didn't you, William? For you and me, this existence might seem surreal, but maybe not if it's all you've ever known. And given that it's so quaintly old-fashioned, it kind of diffuses any Republican animosity. God bless you. And a very happy Christmas to you all. Does it surprise you that Australians, given that many of us, myself included, would put myself down as a Republican, <laughs> that the monarchy on the other side of the world is so relatively popular here? No, I think it, I think it's great. You know, obviously, being part of a family, you know, people are so intrigued about, um, you know, what goes on. And, you know, it's a very different and public kind of family so people want to know sometimes you say they're just a family they are my family yeah. i can't say i mean like people say that i um get grumpy about it but i'm but like, that's what they are to me i know it sounds weird but that's they are my family and it's nothing i can't say any different <laughs> different than that now despite the fact that you had some privilege in your childhood your parents actually wanted a normal life for you we you know, did everything what everyone else did, you know, went to school and... You just went um, to the village school? Initially. Yeah, to initially, yeah. Then they sent us away to boarding school. <laughs> and your mother decided that you wouldn't take the title? Yes. And in retrospect, is that a happy decision for you? Yeah, I mean, it's great, you know. Um, is that all the fun and none of the responsibility? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we've... My brother and I have both been able to do the things we've done and yeah I think we're very lucky and it's it's worked. I, I should note that unlike so many of the royal family you are not on what the English call the civil list that you're not paid by the government or the taxpayer no. that you make your I'm own paying living. I'm taxpayer. You're a, you're a taxpayer. Yeah. Yeah. You're paying for the others. He's a lovely man. Do you, <laughs> you don't mind paying for the rest of the family as a taxpayer? <laughs> but you make your money yourself so yeah. you're a business. I ride all my horses, but I ride for people and um, have sponsors, so, you know, that's the way I try and um, make my business work. It's a winning combination. Modern, non-royal royal and a champion horsewoman... Oh, a nice day. Hey, you look very familiar to me. Have we met? ...which has the sponsors, like Land Rover, lining up to use Zara to flog their wares. You know what I mean? All right, three, two, one, good. Now Zara's in Australia to spruik the Magic Millions Racing Carnival, which is owned by our very own retailing royalty, Jerry Harvey and Katie Page. If you're an eventer, you have to be a very, very brave person. Your yeah. technique has to be fantastic. Yeah. So I was after a woman that was um, had international cachet but was very brave and independent. And that's Zara. I mean, and, I couldn't get a better girl. And the other thing is she's royal without being royal, isn't she? She's royal, but, but you don't see that. But the royal part, I mean, the DNA with that family, with horses, not just eventing but race horses, makes her again the perfect choice for racing women. How much are you paying? You know, it's very reasonable. Yeah. I think it's very reasonable. Every little girl when they're growing up loves their horses, don't they? And it's so, strolling down a Gold Coast beach in the charming company of a reasonably priced royal 
and a billionaire retailer. And from Katie's point of view, you're the ideal ambassador, isn't she, Katie? I know, I don't know why. So, you know... <laughs> It occurred to me that Republicans better take note. The new, easygoing style of the next generation might be the firm's strategy for securing the future here and at home. You're no stranger to Australia, of course. You've, you've lived here, haven't you? Um, well, I don't know about that. I, I spent about four months when I, in my gap year. What did you achieve during your gap year? Not much. <laughs> Which brings us to another reason why Zara has a liking for Australia. Last year she married English rugby great Mike Tyndall, a relationship that first blossomed in Sydney. 2003 World Cup, he was dropped for the semi-final, so I'm, yeah, I met him out at a bar. Which bar? Uh, it was Manly Wharf Bar. And then it kind of went from there. <laughs> is, is it inevitable that sports people gravitate towards one another? I mean, who else understands you and your obsessions? Saying we're obsessed. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, probably. It's yeah. probably easy, yeah. you know, wanting to be the best and kind of goes together well. Just talking about sport in general, are we getting it... Um, are we taking it too seriously now? I mean, it is only a game, isn't it? Oh no, it is only a game, but then it's people's lifestyle, it's their, it's their livelihood, isn't it? And the amount of hours and blood, sweat and tears you put into it, you know, you can see the emo that's the emotion and the hard work and everything coming out at the end. But you were British, I mean, you invented good losing, you people. You gave us the world the aphorism, it's not whether you win or lose, but how you play the game, right? We, we, we pretend we put it out there like that, but actually <laughs> yeah, but it's totally really, different. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the men were supposed to do this. Yeah, they are, but I want to see what kind of good time girl, party girl you are. <laughs> she popped the bottle of expensive French bubbly with an ease that suggested some prior experience. And so ended a long day that I fear did little to advance a Republican cause and nothing to suggest that this delightful young woman's family are going to disappear from our lives anytime soon. Thank you. Here's your brilliant career. Oh, thank you. Good luck thank at the next Olympics. Much. Keep your fingers crossed. They are. <laughs> Hello, I'm Charles Woolley. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.